Maps King are a relative newcomer in the world of FPV drone motors and recently they sent me these 2207 1750 kV motors that have got a surprisingly good spec and they're a great price. But how do these stand up when compared to the existing manufacturers? And just who are they aimed at? And more importantly, are they any good? Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. MEPS King, or MEPS as they seem to be commonly known by everybody, have been on quite the marketing drive for this new range of motors, the space motors. And they asked me if I'd like to take a look at them, along with loads of other FPV YouTubers. Now, there's been quite a kerfuffle about the contracts they sent out to the reviewers and some of the information that they posted on their company blog. I'll leave you to nosy around and draw your own conclusions about all this. And I'll get on with judging their products and see if this 2207 1750 kV motor is any good. And before anyone says anything, no, I haven't signed any MEPS King contract and they've had no influence over this review or paid me anything. They just sent me these motors to have a look at. And I like to give all new products a chance. And just like all the product reviews on this channel, I judge things fairly and give you my personal opinion. So, let's have a closer look at this. This is their SZ2207 1750 kV space motor. And you can also get a 1950 and a 2750 kV to suit four to six S batteries. And they're available in orange like this and a rather fancy range of colors, including a particularly spectacular fluorescent green. It's a Unibel design with a hollow prop shaft, apparently made from titanium, and it uses a bolt to hold the bell in place rather than the circlet, which is what I actually prefer. Now the weight on this, let's have a quick look, see if I can get that on there. 34.5 grams, near enough. You see that? Yeah, 34.5, there we go. And it looks very well made, and the cost on this is only $20. Now they include, the usual stuff, you get a prop nut, a set of mounting bolts, and usefully they include two sizes of mounting bolt. So there's this one here, longer one, which is nine millimeters, and you get one which is eight millimeters. And that's really useful because it's gonna cope with different sizes of arms. And you also get a spare bell mounting bolt which is good as well as these two washers these mount up inside here one's a traditional washer and the other one I think is anti-vibration I think that's what it's for but what caught my eye on the data sheets was the efficiency of these 1750 kV motors particularly at the mid-range throttle settings they look pretty good I'm not going to be running any bench tests on these, but I am going to replace the motors on one of my quads and test them out and see how they perform for real. But before I do that, let's get these under the microscope for an even closer look. So we've got the bell in all its glory. It does seem to be very nicely machined. And as you can see, it's got the hollow shaft. It's difficult to tell how strong that would be. You'll only know when you've actually hit a few walls and trees. And up inside there, we've got the magnets. They all seem very nicely mounted. Again, how well they're mounted, it's impossible to tell until you've used it for quite a long time. And this has got 14 magnets around here. I say it does look very nice space the final frontier hmm looks quite nice let's have a quick look at the stator again windings all look sort of as normal really nothing spectacular but nothing out of the ordinary 
all very good. And of course, having the bolt makes it much easier to take the, the bell off if you do damage anything. And this is where the spare washers go. So you've got that vibration washer at the bottom, and then there's an actual washer that fits over the top like that. Well, that was very interesting. So I swapped these motors for the standard ones that I've got on my AOS 5 frame. I haven't changed any PIDs and I'm running on the same HQ S3 ethics props that I normally use. And there's no sound or signs of any grumbles on the motors and they're running just as cool as they always do. Subjectively, these are not very punchy motors. So they're not really designed for racers or fast acro pilots. But that's to be expected. These are 1750 kV motors designed for long range running on 6S. And on the last flight I did out here, I stuck to about 50 to 70% throttle and got nearly an extra minute. And it's a bit cooler out here, so flight times will naturally be a little bit longer. Anyway, I think nearly a minute is quite impressive. So I'm going to get packed up, go home, have a cup of tea, and then I'll let you know what I really think about these motors. The MAPS King specs for the 1750 kV motors say they're more efficient than your average 2207 motor at around 50 to 70% throttle setting. And my flight tests subjectively confirm that. Getting longer flight times is a relative measure of increased motor efficiency, so it looks like these do what they say on the box. If you're looking for a long range 6S motor for a great price, around $20, and that's £18 in the UK, then you should definitely consider these. But will they stand up to long term use? Is the bell easily damaged or the shaft easily broken? I really can't tell you yet, but I will be keeping these on this quad and I will be keeping you posted on progress. And it's going to be fascinating to see how well these new motors and other MEPS King products do in the fickle world of FPV. And the emergence of a new manufacturer is always encouraging. And I've seen many rise and fall over the years. Ultimately, their success or failure hinges on the quality of their products and how they treat and support their customers. So what do you think of these motors? I'd love to know your opinion on them, so do let me know. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.